Hello, welcome back, I'm Statman Dave. Today we're going to be talking about Michael Carrick's debut 11 and what happened next. Michael Carrick was snapped up by Ferguson from Tottenham Hotspur in the summer of 2006 for a mere £18 million. He made his debut against Watford in a 2-1 win away at Vicarage Road. And here's the 11 that started that day. Well, first up, we've got Edwin van der Sar in goal. United finally replaced the great Dane Peter Schmeichel with van der Sar in 2006 from Fulham for around £2 million. What a steal and one of the best goalkeepers United ever had. In terms of his positioning, that's what made him so great. He was so good at getting his body in the right position, which made all of his saves look very simple. But it was great from van der Sar, use a little bit of footwork, get into the right area and make a cracking save. In terms of records in the Premier League, there's some that still stand from Edwin van der Sar's days. He's kept the joint most clean sheets in a single season at 21 with Petr Cech, but also the longest run ever without conceding a goal in Premier League history. 1,311 minutes later, van der Sar conceded a goal in 2008-2009 behind the great Nemanja Vidic and Rio Ferdinand. He made his debut a year before Michael Carrick and three years later it was van der Sar's save against Nicolas Anelka that won the Champions League that he lifted with Michael Carrick in 2008. Now he's a CEO at Ajax. Let's move on to the right back and that is John O'Shea. John O'Shea the greatest utility man Manchester United ever had. Against Watford he played right back but the beauty of O'Shea was that he could do a job whenever Ferguson gave him a task. He started off as a left back but played every single position on the pitch for Manchester United. Even in goal against Tottenham where he kept a clean sheet and made a wonderful save against Robbie Keane. He scored some big goals for United as well including a 90th minute winner at Wanfield. But maybe his finest moment a nutmeg on Luis Figo in the Champions League. This season in the Premier League with Sunderland. Unfortunately they are relegated and it will be Championship football for Jono next season. Always great at marching down that wing. So let's move on to the centre half and it's Wes Brown, he's big, he's bad, he's Wesley Brown. The hardest man in all the town, with orange hair beware, come and have a go if you dare. Wes Brown, what a hero, an excellent defender, brilliant on the ball and for me, the best right fullback in the world when United won the Champions League in Moscow. Brilliant at defending, covering up from where Ronaldo would leave him exposed, 1v1 was fantastic and of course in Moscow put the ball into the box for Ronaldo to jump, tower up and score the first goal for Manchester United. After leaving United he joined Sunderland before moving up the road to Blackburn as a player coach. Maybe one day he'll return to United. In the backroom staff he's big and he's bad and he could definitely do that. Moving on to the other centre-back, of course, it's Rio Ferdinand. By the time Carrick had made his debut away at Watford, Rio had already played 167 games for United. Sometimes you forget how long Ferdinand played at the top level for at Manchester United. 12 seasons, in fact. Rio was the first world-class ball-playing centre-back I had ever seen live. Never afraid to play a zipping pass out the back into the feet of the striker. An underrated part of the game though was Rio's ability to read the game and defend and step out and win the ball at the correct moment. One of the best defenders I've ever seen. Pacey, quick, strong, he had it all. And again, it's taken United a number of years to replace Rio Ferdinand. Maybe we found him now in Eric Bay, fantastic player on the ball and also aggressive and really, really quick and great at reading the play. After United, Rio Ferdinand went on to play for Higher Ednaps QPR before hanging up his boots in 2015. He now works on the BBC and of course on BT Sport. Rio, Rio, you absolute legend. On to the left back for the day and that was Mikel Silvestre. Despite an approach from Liverpool manager Gerard Houllier, Silvestre signed for United for £4 million on the 10th of September 1999 and made his debut the following day at Anfield against Liverpool. A solid centre-back but also played as a left-back. In fact, he opened the scoring against Watford with a cracking overlapping run from full-back, found by Saha in the box before Silvestre rifled home past the goalkeeper. Interestingly enough, he made nearly 250 appearances for United, coming up one short. He left United for Arsenal 2008 before moving to Germany, America and then finishing off his career in India. Moving on to Cristiano Ronaldo, the right midfielder in this 4-4-2. What a player Ronaldo was. Famously, Ferguson bet Ronnie 400 quid he wouldn't score over 15 goals at the start of the 2006 season, the season that Carrick joined. By the end of that year, Ronaldo had scored double figures in the league for the first time in his career, 17 in fact. Ronaldo went on to score 118 goals in 292 games for United. 
One of his best was against Porto, a 45-yard thunderbolt in the Champions League quarter-final. That 2009 thunderbolt was his last year at Old Trafford. He moved to Real Madrid and has gone on to break goal-scoring records in both Spain and in Europe. Viva Ronaldo! And then we'll move on to Michael Carrick in central midfield. For me, Michael Carrick has been so good because he's been part of three great Man United midfields. Champions League defining midfields. The first one in 2008, Carrick and Paul Scholes. The perfect combo between a holder, a disciplined player sitting in front of a back two defenders in Michael Carrick, and of course Paul Scholes to run the game. The tempo that Paul Scholes used to set at Manchester United was perfect. It was receiving the ball in central midfield and using his great range of passing to hit the wingers on the left hand side, on the right hand side, or fizzing the ball into the striker's feet. Paul Scholes, one of the greatest playmakers I've ever seen. But why he was so good was because Michael Carrick did his defensive responsibility for him. Skulls could push up, make rash tackles, but he always knew Michael Carrick was in behind in the perfect position to intercept the ball and get it back to Paul Skulls. What a pairing those two guys were. In terms of Michael Carrick, he's just signed a new one-year deal at Manchester United, which expires in 2018. His experience in the dressing room is invaluable, and he'll be vital for the next generation of Manchester United players coming through. I'm talking Paul Pogba, Marcus Rashford, Anthony Martial. The list can go on and on and on. But moving to his partner, of course, it's world-class midfielder Darren Fletcher, who made my Manchester United ultimate 11. If United had had Fletcher, Carrick and Anderson in Rome against Barcelona, United could have won another Champions League under Ferguson. That evening, United lacked Fletcher's intensity from central midfield, and the Catalans had that freedom to dictate the play, something that Fletcher wouldn't have allowed. He was so good at being bustling, attacking, aggressive, he destroyed Arsenal so many times on his own by just bullying them in central midfield. Tactically, towards the end of Ronaldo's career, the Portuguese winger would sit high and wait on the counter-attack, which left Fletcher so much ground to cover, usually played on that right central midfield. But Fletcher did it so well, shuttling out to protect the right fullback, a task that he absolutely excelled in. Darren Fletcher, football genius. It was him that forced Matt Spring into a poor back pass that led to United's second goal, giving United a 2-1 lead and getting the three points to Old Trafford and putting United top of the league. But to move us on to left midfield, of course, it's Ryan Giggs on his 600th start for Manchester United. When you take a look at United's legends, that stat really puts it into context. 600 starts for United. He went on to make another 300. That is absolutely incredible. And Michael Carrick was very much part of Giggs' evolution from cultured winger to central midfielder playmaker. In 2010, Giggs moved inside to partner Michael Carrick in the heart of midfield. He looked like he'd played there the entire career, but again, it was Michael Carrick making that transition so simple. Carrick's positioning and defensive awareness freed up Giggs to create for Wayne Rooney, Javier Hernandez, Nani, and of course, Valencia on that right wing. United got to another Champions League final with Giggs in central midfield, but again, Barcelona stood in their way. Giggs is currently looking for a job in management after a spell at United as manager and also assistant under Louis van Gaal. Which moves us on to our front two in our 4-4-2, it's Louis Saha. Saha assisted the goal against Watford and in some games Saha turned up, he was completely unplayable. Rooney cited him as his favourite ever strike partner. Unfortunately, he had an injury play time at Manchester United, left for Everton in 2008 before playing for Tottenham, Sunderland and Lazio. And now potentially you'll see him on French TV. And to finish things off, it's Oli Gunnar Solskjaer up front. You are my Solskjaer, my Oli Solskjaer. You make me happy when skies are grey. Oh, Alan Shearer was dearer, but please don't take my Solskjaer away. The baby-faced assassin was best known for his goal late in May in 1999. Oli scored a goal in injury time. What a feeling, what a night. A fantastic striker, capable of scoring from any angle, from any sort of assist, whether a volley, header, shot from outside the area, was so clinical at putting the ball in the back of the net. Ferguson always talked about how Solskjaer had a knack of sitting on the bench as he was a sub and studying his opponent. And that obviously transitioned to where Solskjaer is now as a manager. Solskjaer took over as a Man United re reserves in around 2008, won the league title before moving to his beloved Mould in Norway. A season at Cardiff followed before he returned back to Mould where he continues to do a fantastic job. And that's that for Michael Carrick's debut 11. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you're new to Full Time Devils, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Of course, if you want to see more of my work, jump over to Statman Dave on YouTube. Over and out. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. See you later.